position, this is a very standard, what opening? Very standard. What opening is this? You can tell by looking at it. Very easy. Mm, Just randomly say an opening, you'll be right. Sicilian? Of course. Sicilian. I wouldn't show a non-Sicilian. Yeah. Well, there's no C pawn for black, and there's no D pawn for white, so it's open Sicilian. Look where all the pieces are, right? This is, this is a Sicilian for sure. Okay. Also, if you've memorized the ECO codes, it says B87. That's a Sicilian. Okay. B like 50 to 99 is Sicilian. When I say B50, I mean B30. Although B30 is not the open Sicilian. That's like the Bishop B5 Sicilian. Okay. Also, the kids don't know what ECOs are. <laughs> Truth hurts. Okay, and half the adults don't either. All right. So in this position, black is always better. The only way for white to be better is if white checkmates black. Then white's better. But white's not checkmating black. Okay, why is black better? Black has space on the queen side, so these pieces are silly. They can't do anything. And I have the open C file. Yay! And I have the greatest bishop ever. And also important, I have two pawns in this center, and you have one. Two is more than one. Right? Okay. So in this position, black played the most obvious move. If you don't know what it is, I'll show you. Mm -hmm. Oh, sacrifice the next to change. <laughs> yeah, so what move did black play? I'm not sure if you can even sacrifice this. Oh, it's black. Nice. Uh, I think. Well, if you can't sacrifice the exchange now, what move could you make so you could? A rook c8. Rook c8. See? Chess is easy. Now, you want your rook on c8 anyway. Rook's good on c8. Yeah, good. Now, I was making fun of Niradisky earlier because I got to make fun of somebody. I'll make fun of you guys. I'll make fun of them too. And I could really make fun of him because I could point out his opponent's rating. What's my rating? Well, no, his <laughs> opponent's rating. Uh, up there. Petty? So, yeah, I'm not being petty, but, you know, also I could, put, I could point out Niradisky's rating. Now, where did I find this game? By an article by Niradisky. He's like, when I was younger, I used to sack the exchange and I was great. Now I'm 2650, so I draw all my games. And I was like, all right. Okay, and I played Deraditsky once, and it was a draw, because I was higher rated than him. Now if we played, I'd run away, okay? And he would catch me, he's faster than me. Darn it. Taller than me, more educated, higher rated, but I'm funnier looking. Okay, so after Rook C8, his opponent was trying not to be petty, and played the move, Rook E1. Okay, now again, when I teach sacrificing the exchange, for purposes of aggressiveness, which is what I usually do, usually they're not defensive, the Trojan defensive, is if you can get anything, then you should sacrifice the exchange. If you have any excuse, you should do it. If you're like, I have an attack, I have an extra pawn, I triple my opponent's pawns, my opponent's rook is trapped for 10 moves, any excuse you have, you should sacrifice the exchange. Here, Black has many excuses, so he played, Rook c3. And the Sicilian, this is very common. Rook c8 and taking the knight on c3. And the reason is, in a lot of Sicilians, the knight on c3 is defending the e-pawn. And so if you take it, then it's not. Now you're going to have two center pawns to zero. Two is more than zero. And you were taught by somebody who was not me that a rook is worth a minor piece and two pawns. Okay? And I would say about 85% of the time, a minor piece in two pawns is better than a rook. I would say it's closer to a minor piece in one pawn. However, it's more than a pawn. It's like a pawn and a quarter. Plus tax. So here, black's getting a pawn. Black's getting a center pawn. Black's getting a very active piece on d4. And in the short run, possibly the long run, this bishop's going to be no good. Because if I take on e4, I can play d5 whenever I want. I'm not a big fan of that guy. Okay. And without these pawns, I mean, okay, if I can push my pawns, I can attack your king, I can push to the center, then my rooks might get better. Okay. They took with a pawn, shocking the audience. I would take with a queen. I'm totally baffled. Let's see what the engine does. It says, take with a queen is good, take with a pawn's not as good. Yeah. And then the fan starts running. That means it's too hard for the computer. Although in the last class, the kid couldn't hear the fan. He was standing right next to it. Can't you hear it from where you are now? I yeah. can't The kid was standing, he's like, I don't hear it. Maybe he's deaf. I mean, that's the only way, because it makes a lot of noise when it's confused. Okay. 
So he took with a pawn. Why would you take with a pawn? Yeah. All right. Then bishop takes. And now, I mean, White's position is terrible. It's all terrible. And you can say, I have a rook for a bishop. That's correct. <coughs> Yeah. But, or is it for a knight? That's more correct. Yeah. You have a rook for a knight, but everything white has is terrible. Terrible pawn structure. Bishop on b3 can't do anything. Rooks can't do anything. In a lot of Sicilians, when you play f4, you do a rook lift, and then you mate your opponent Petrosian style. It's like half a joke. Knight? I don't think you're going to go here now, are you? My coach no. commented on Rover. Yeah. Is your coach Jen Shahadi? David, David, David Petty? Bory. David Petty? No, David and Bory. What? David's Bory? No, he's not. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just kidding. He is. David's Bory. Yeah. Well, he stole that because that's what Jen Shahadi says. She calls it a rover because it's a rook up and over. I also steal that. I only steal from the best. That's why I never tell jokes Ovi's told. <laughs> never. I only steal from the best. Okay. So, all right. So White played, White resigned. Whoa, I'm all crazy over here. White played c4 because? Explosive. Explosive. Now you know why he took with this pawn, so he can keep playing c4. Wow. Okay. Queen a8. I wonder what the threat is. Oh, yeah. It's funny because they all wonder, too. I mean, bishop g2. Bishop g2. And also the queen and bishop make what? You need it for your video games. A battery. A battery. Okay, so white obviously stopped that. Takes on c4, takes on c4, rook c8, hang on a second, another exchange. No. Bishop d3, hooray, he got his bishop good. d5, man, black has the center, black has the c file, white has two isolated pawns, and again, I'm not saying black's winning, although maybe he is. What I'm saying is, if you're an engine, you're a computer, which some of you are, then you could probably play pretty well for white, but if you're a human, and you're like, hmm, my opponent has two center pawns, I have zero, my opponent has an open C file, I have two isolated weak pawns, my rooks are no good, my king is lined up with his queen and bishop. It's hard to play good moves, you start playing bad moves. The computer might say it's equal, but everybody takes black. Now the bishop is open, yeah. Okay, bishop e4, we got a replacement piece for that. f5 going for the attack, bishop f6, the real attack. Queen c6, and this surprises everybody in the audience, because normally when you're down material, you don't trade pieces. But in this position, white's rooks are terrible. All of black's pieces are terrible. The only good white piece is the queen. He's threatening something. The, the only bad black piece is this queen trapped in the corner. You always want to trade bad pieces for good pieces. So queen on a8 is in the corner trapped. Queen on b6 is the only one you grow. Trade them off. Takes, takes, rook b1, defending his queen, knight c3 forking. No, what a world. He escaped the fork, obviously, with some tricks. Okay, and now we have an end game where I like black because we have two isolated pawns, I have two center pawns, I have the c file, and the white bishop can't attack anything. And you have an isolated pawn. Yeah, white has two isolated pawns. Boom. Well, black also has Yeah, but that's a good isolated pawn. It stops him from queening. And this one's not, because I don't, I don't use the, the, the inverse. Only what's good for black. Okay, now if I turn the engine on, it's not going to say black's winning. Although I haven't turned the engine on before, so it might say black's up seven. I don't know. I prefer black. I would say... I would say 0.37. I don't know. 0.3... 0.48. Where's 0.37? It's negative. Wow, there's 0.37 in reverse. Yeah, so it, actually the computer likes black more than I do. Nice. Okay. Negative means it's good for black. Right, I'm not trying to be negative. You with some question. Uh, so it seems like in all these positions, you add, you assess your position based on the possibilities of your pieces. Yeah, you want active pieces. Active Kasparov pieces. told us that. Before that, we didn't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Kasparov was like, you can have all my pieces, all my other ones are good. Yeah, you could take everything else. And a rook is better than a knight because a rook can do more than a knight. A rook's better than a bishop because a rook can do more than a bishop. But in this position, mm -hmm. if I compare these two, knight better. I mean, I mean, if the rook, you know, if the white rook got somewhere, you know, I don't know where, where he can take some pawns or something, 
On E1, I can't I can't play rook B1. Well, okay, knight B5 was played, attacking all of White's pawns. Some for real, some by discovery, because he moved his knight out of the way. I guess that was the discovery. Confused. A4, knight A3. That pawn's hard to defend. Rook B7 check. Bomb yum yum. And as I said earlier, when you have a knight and two pawns for a rook, that's much better for the knight and two pawns. And this is pretty clear because black has two connected pass pawns in the center. Now again, I like pass pawns when they're queening. So I'm not as happy as you guys are. Okay, when these pawns get here, then I'll be happy. Now I'm just like, yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, rook c1. And as the great John Fedorowitz once says, have you heard John Fedorowitz or just me? No. No? Maybe a purple Grandmaster, yeah. Been a grandmaster of the U.S. for like 45 years in the Hall of Fame, playing like 20 U.S. championships. Wow. Never heard John Fedorowitz talk. Can you believe that? Maybe a purple dinosaur knows. Anyway, John Fedorowitz once told me, I got two pass pawns, so I pushed them. And ever since he told me that, I was like, yeah, I'm going to do that. <laughs> okay, so Naroditsky must have agreed, because he got two pass pawns. He sacrifices the exchange back, because otherwise he loses his bishop. If he tries to win the bishop for... Black's bishop, checkmate. Aw. So rook takes a6. Now it's equal material, but two pass pawns is better than one. Rawr! 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 Yeah, he can't even believe it. He's like, what? How'd those pawns get there? Yeah. And now, white's position is fine, except he two pass pawns in the center means you lose. Yeah, otherwise he's doing great. Yeah. Man, that's a lot of pass pawns. And now the computers say some crazy number, something crazy. Look at those crazy numbers. The prototypical exchange sacrifice that I want to talk about today was this one. Petrosian too complicated. You guys shouldn't have paid attention there. Rook takes c3 in the Sicilian, and you win the e4 pawn. You always want to do that. 